Hey guys, how are you doing today? So I told you that I would come on and I wanted to speak about the immune system. We are going to be doing our, basically an anti-inflammatory, it is a whole review, and it's basically a challenge. Each day I'll give you an exercise to do. So today I wanted to talk about the immune system. If you're not familiar with me, I am Sharon McLaughlin, Dr. McLaughlin. I am the creator of the Whole Body Weight Loss Blueprint. It is a step-by-step -step program that helps with weight loss, but we do it with an anti-inflammatory approach. So let's talk about the immune system, right? We know that we need a healthy immune system as far as fighting off any infections. Now, there's basic behaviors that are really going to help us with our immune system. Excess stress, so we really need to control that. Making sure that we get enough sleep. Exposure to toxins, that we'll talk about more as this Facebook group goes along. Uh, you know, certain products such as skincare products, I can go, I'll do this in another talk, but it's basically estimated that most of us, um, especially the woman, by the time that they leave for work in the morning, but by the time that they drive the kids to school or whatever they're doing, they've already been exposed to about 60 chemicals. And you can say, wow, that's incredible. But think about it, the toothpaste, the shampoo, the body lotions we put on, all the makeup, it truly, uh, you know, unfortunately we worry about the toxin exposure, but I'll talk about that in another lecture or another uh, post here or video. Also, we know drinking too much alcohol, that can really affect our immune system. And basically it comes down to like our, how we live our, our lifestyle. So as far as helping to prevent infections, there's a few things that I'd like to cover. The immune system itself, mostly our spleen, like we need a good healthy spleen. We need a thymus, which is in the chest. We need healthy lymph nodes. We need bone marrow that's healthy. And then there's a whole host of cells that I can go into, lymphocytes, macrophages, killer T cells, natural killer, natural uh, cells, natural killer T cells. So we need all of that. So how do we get a healthy immune system? Basically the same way that we live a healthy lifestyle, how we lose weight, really can affect our immune system as well. It's all tied in making sure you're getting enough sleep really is very important. Making sure you're getting exercise, making sure that you know, you're eating plenty of fruits and vegetables, all of this really comes into play. So studies, let's start off with basic exercise. We know that we're supposed to be getting enough exercise. It used to be about 150 minutes a week. The American Cancer Society has actually now recommended 300 minutes of exercise a week because we sit so long, we're in front of a computer. A lot of us, when we're working, we're working in front of a computer. And it's probably one of the worst things that we can do for ourselves. Sitting too much, a sedentary lifestyle, and then not exercising enough not getting our fruits and vegetables. If you're able to do those three things, honestly, you're so much ahead of the game. So exercise, it could be something like a brisk walk, it could be jogging, aerobics, cycling, swimming. It doesn't matter. You, there's plenty of exercises that you can even do at home. You don't have to go to a gym. You don't have to buy expensive equipment. It's all there right in front of you. You have your body weight. You could use that to do planks and squats, some push-ups. If you're not able to do a push-up yet, try like a wall push-up, just leaning against a wall, and it'll really help start uh, increasing your muscle mass. And that in itself will help uh, increase metabolism because we know that muscle burns more uh, energy throughout the day than fat does. And then on top of that, it helps boost our immune system as well. All right, so make sure you're getting enough exercise. If you look at people who exercise compared to those who don't, there was one study that I saw, they, people who exercise, they had about a 45% less risk of developing a your upper respiratory tract infection. Now, the problem with doing too much exercise, there are other studies as well, which I wanted to mention. The people that want that are um, basically they're preparing for a marathon or they do run a marathon. A lot of people who run a marathon within a week, they also get sick. So too much exercise about, you know, anything over 90 minutes a day could be too much or it depends on really the intensity of it. So just don't overdo it. When you overdo it, you deplete your glycogen stores in a relatively short amount of time. And also cortisol level is released. Cortisol, as you remember, is the stress hormone. So if that's released, unfortunately, that can affect our immune system as well. So you just have to be like in a happy medium there. It's estimated between like maybe 30 to 60 minutes of moderate exercise each day is good. Over 90 minutes, probably too much. So just be careful of that. And you definitely want to do some strength training. There was another exercise, uh, there was another study as well that showed that strength training can increase the way our um, you know, muscle mass as well as our T cells and longevity as well. 
<clears throat> sorry. So these are all things to consider. Okay, remember exercise, it's gonna help decrease our stress hormone levels. It's also gonna help with sleep as well, and I'll get more into that. But sleep is extremely important with how we do with our immune system. So when we sleep, we know that our bodies are repairing themselves. They're repairing our cells. We're also forming new cells. It happens all throughout the day, but definitely when we're sleeping. So you don't want to deprive yourself of sleep. The studies show that when we're sleep deprived, when we're getting less than six hours of sleep, we're more likely to develop a head cold. I know myself, um, my husband, he used to do overnight shifts. And when he did, he did like one or two a month, but when he did, he was always more susceptible to developing a head cold a couple of days later. It, unfortunately, you know, unless your body is used to it, and even those overnight shift workers that do this, you know, that's their full-time job is to work like 11 at night till seven in the morning. Studies have shown that they're more likely to be overweight and also high risk of diabetes. So it, it goes along with lack of sleep as well and kind of going against your circadian rhythm. So just make sure you're getting at least six hours of sleep at night. Personally, I always recommend seven and more. And studies also show that too much sleep could be a problem as well. So anything over like 10 or 11 hours, not good. So between seven, eight hours is like a perfect amount of sleep each night. And remember, we want our bodies to heal themselves. We know that by studies, uh, studies also show that natural killer cells they're actually, uh, you know, there's a positive impact on natural killer cells and sleep. So when we're sleep deprived, our natural killer cells don't work as well. And we worry about decreased immune uh, response, which I mentioned to you. Also, when we're sleep deprived, we're more likely to crave certain foods. Those foods can be sugar, refined grains, and it makes sense, right? Because we're lack of sleep, we need energy. So unfortunately, we're looking for like cakes and cookies, candies, anything to give us some energy. And we know that sugar and refined grains, it increases our level of inflammation. So that's a problem because we know that there's a high risk of obesity, being overweight, chronic disease, and on top of that inflammation as well. So you just have to be careful. Other studies show that when you're sleep deprived and you get a vaccination, that you have, um, the way that vaccines work is that when you get a vaccination, you have antibodies that are produced. So studies show that when you sleep deprived and you get a vaccination, that you actually um, form less antibodies to that vaccination, which is interesting, right? So there's definitely an association between sleep and our immune system. We also know that when we're sleep deprived, we're stressed. Cortisol, our hormones are shifted a little bit. Cortisol is produced. Cortisol is the stress hormone. And unfortunately that affects the, lymph the lymphocytes and lymphocytes are needed for our immune system. So again, stress, Lack of sleep can all affect our immune system. So it's really important. Another thing that I can do, and I'll get more into it, is that stress in itself can affect our micro microbiome. And that's the gut bacteria. Our gut bacteria are extremely important, and I'll get into that, but as far as our immune system, so just keep that in mind. So what can we do as far as stress? I certainly can't take stress away from you, but things like a box a box breathing technique. And I speak about this in my course that I offer, the whole body, the whole body weight loss blueprint, but a box technique, deep breathing, certain types of deep breathing, yoga. In the course that I offer too, there's also a course that I did with a few of the female physicians that are colleagues of mine. And there's over 30 physicians that, have, um, that are in this conference. We put on a weight loss summit, uh, basically in the summertime or the fall, but you can take a look at that as well. That's on my website. So just something to keep in mind, but remember nutrition, you know, nutrition also plays with their immune system as well, sleep and stress. So as far as our, the nutrition itself, we know that it's important as far as weight management, but can also affect our the inflammatory markers and also affect our immune system. So remember, rather than having sugar, refined greens, basically foods that have no nutritional value, make sure you're getting those vegetables, make sure you're getting the fruits, the whole grains, the beans, the legumes, lentils. They're all important as far as phytochemicals and phytonutrients. You really want to avoid the highly processed foods. That could be fried foods. It could be some of the oils that are processed, some of the refined grains, which I mentioned. Unfortunately, they all affect our immune system, all right? And then, unfortunately, some vegetables too, depending on the exposure of uh, Roundup. So make sure that when you're getting your vegetables, try to do organic. 
and certain types, it, it depends. There's um, the environmental working group. They put out a list of 12 vegetables, 12 fruits that you should be concerned about as far as exposure to Roundup or some of the, um, the fertilizers that are, can really damage our gut. Remember, I stick with fruits and vegetables and just make sure you're really washing them well. There's some, uh, you could do with baking soda, but there's some ways to wash your vegetables as well. And in the stores, there's vegetable washes, typically in the produce aisle, not too expensive. They're, you know, maybe three, four dollars, but something you definitely want to look into. In my program, I always talk about the Mediterranean diet. I think it's one of the best diets that we can do. We, there's a whole host of like, the rainbow of colors we talk about, all different types of vegetables, nuts, and olive oil. Compared to cooking with different types of oils, I think olive oil is one of the best to cook with. It has a relatively high smoking point, but on top of that, it has plenty of antioxidants and polyphenols as well. It's healthy for us. And in the Mediterranean diet, we speak about eating fish about twice a week. Not too much red meat at all, so that's a concern. And I'll speak about that in another talk. So what type of foods can you have? Green tea is, is probably, you know, it's a great tea. To, it's a great drink to sip on. It has EGCG. It's a polyphenol. It has been shown to help with the immune system. It has flavonoids in it. One of the flavonoids are curcerotin. But it doesn't really matter like the names. It just matters that if you're going to, you know, rather than, you could do caffeine like tea, um green tea does have caffeine in it. You can do coffee, but maybe switch it up with some green tea. We know that there's a lot of polyphenols in it, which again can help boost our immune system and more importantly, boost how our overall health. Berries, I speak a lot about them. Blackberries and raspberries, they're high in, high in fiber, but they also have antioxidants in them. They have anthocyanins and that's what gives the berries the rich color. So if they're not in season, what you can do is consider having frozen food, frozen berries. And I put them in my oatmeal, some smoothies, Greek yogurt. I just have them as a snack, as a side dish. So these are all things, all types of foods that you can eat that are really good for our gut. Yesterday, there was a question that came up as far as uh, autoimmune disease. So these are just some tips that can help. Turmeric is a spice. It's used to make curry. It has a, a component in it called curcumin is what gives this spice that orangey color. But that has also been shown to help with our immune system. It helps, it helps T cells as well as B cells and even some macrophages. So again, uh, as far, you could do like turmeric tea. I do that. Uh, and I actually have a recipe for golden milk. So I'll put that into the group. But you could do golden tea. I mean, golden milk. You could do a turmeric tea. The curries are made with turmeric. You could do a chicken dish with a combination of turmeric as a spice. You could do um, scrambled tofu. And sometimes you could, uh, you know, kind of shake in or add some turmeric to that. It's all great ways to get turmeric into your diet. It, it is a strong flavor. You may not like it. But there's ways to change the taste of it as well. I personally like it. And because I know it's so good for me, I, I have no problem eating it. Garlic is another food that you can consider. I cook a lot with olive oil and with garlic. My background is Italian, but it has an amino acid, alanine in it, and that's actually converted to allicin, which has been shown to have antimicrobial properties. Also with garlic, it's been shown to help lower blood pressure. So if you're borderline blood pressure, you know, borderline hypertension, or you have hypertension, you may want to consider getting more garlic into your diet, something you could speak about with your physician. As far as immune, immune diseases, immune, uh, immunity or immune response, vitamin C we know is so important, right? It's typically in citrus fruits like lemons and limes and oranges, tangerines, grapefruits, but it's also in peppers. So that helps with the formation of white blood cells. So we know that that's really important for our body. Fermented foods such as sauerkraut. Uh, now you can buy a probiotic supplement, but I don't recommend it. Just always stick with whole foods. So if you like sauerkraut, if you like a drink called uh, kefir, it's a type of um, almost like a heavy milk, but that has probiotics in it. Some of the, our yogurt has live cultures in it. They have probiotics in them as well. Some of the like uh, Japanese foods, whether it's miso and there's some drinks, kombucha, also they'll have probiotics in them. And what they can do is really help flourish our intestinal bacteria. 
when we're exposed to toxins, when we're exposed to too much sugar and, and refined grains, it actually hurts our gut bacteria. So by taking a probiotic, like foods that have probiotics in them, you can really help flourish, our gut, flourish your gut. Now that's a problem when we're taking antibiotics, right? Sometimes you get diarrhea, it wipes out that whole, not the whole, but it wipes out a lot of the gut bacteria. And when it comes to the bacteria, we want a really diverse load of gut bacteria. So again, take these probiotics, they're extremely important. Mushrooms are another one, they have beta glucons, and not so much the white mushrooms, but think about uh, shiitake, mataki, the oyster uh, mushrooms. Again, they've been shown to help with uh, macrophages as well as natural killer T cells. So one of the things that we can do is be careful of our alcohol, the intake. I have a glass of alcohol each night. Basically, I stick with red wine and I do a little less than a glass a day, but that's fine. Too much alcohol is a problem. Again, it hurts our gut bacteria and we worry about dependency as well. So there's different ways to manage our stress but resorting to illegal drugs or uh, recreational drug use or drinking too much is not one of them. So if you need help with that, reach out to me. I have some good resources for that. All right, as far as gut bacteria themselves, it's important because we need, in our gut, we need to um, absorb nutrients, micronutrients, vitamins. They're all really important for our, our body. And unfortunately, when we don't have healthy gut lining and when we don't have healthy gut bacteria, we're more prone to developing macronutrient deficiencies. And those include zinc, it includes uh, magnesium, and even iron. So these are all the reasons for why it's important to have that diverse, you know, the diverse rainbow of foods and being careful as far as the foods that you're eating and what you're consuming. Remember, they could taste good um, and the food manufacturers really go out of their way to encourage you know you to eat the food so they have a lot of salt they have a lot of sugar they have a lot of unhealthy fats there's certain bacteria that we can be exposed to as well that's helobacter and what happens is that because of that they also can change our gut bacteria so you have to be careful of that so remember probiotics fermented foods all foods that are going to help as well as all the foods that i've listed we worry about nutrient deficiencies, so we really want to keep up with, um, sorry, there's a hawk outside. I always worry about the bunny rabbits that are outside. We always worry about, um, I'm sorry, vegetables, fruits, whole grains. They're all foods that can really help with our gut bacteria. And that's really what it comes down to. And when you do that, if you're overweight right now, by just changing your diet, really changing your nutrition, it's going to help with weight loss as well. And I know there's tons of diets out there. There's not one diet for one person, but if we could just approach this with an anti-inflammatory approach, because that's what's going to help prevent chronic disease. That's what's going to help with longevity. There's lots of diets out there. Not all of them are healthy, but if you stick with an approach that's more anti-inflammatory, you're gonna lose the weight, but it's also gonna help you internally as well and help prevent those chronic diseases. So back to our immune system. Vitamin D is extremely important. And I've spoken about this before. You can get vitamin D through certain foods, but more importantly, you need to go out in the sun. I can, I'm exposed to a window right now. But what happens is that those UV light, UV uh, waves, they don't necessarily come through the glass. So it's extremely important, depending on where you live, to be outside. And, you know, in the wintertime here in New York, it's cold. So I usually get all bundled up. And unfortunately, I don't have a lot of sun exposure. I'm fair, so I don't need as much sun exposure. But when you have darker color skin, um, unfortunately, you know, darker skin tones, more you have to be outside even upwards of two hours to get enough vitamin D exposure. So that may be something, uh, um, sun exposure to what happens is that when you're out in the sun, your skin, your the sun is exposed, uh, the skin is exposed to, UV, you know, ultraviolet radiation, and that actually helps produce vitamin D. We can get vitamin D through our foods as well, but they're not great sources, but some foods include salmon and sardines and liver, egg yolks, and even some of the fortified foods such as cereals and some of the breads. But again, if you're outside, you're probably getting enough vitamin D. If you are living in North America, um, or it's winter months in South America, depending on where, where you are um, from the equator. 
you may be vitamin D deficient and that certainly affects our immune system. So maybe something you want to speak to your physician about as far as getting tested. Zinc is another food, uh, you know, or another, I should say, nutrient that's important for our immune system. And that can be found in meats and, you know, such as beef, also some shellfish, some look like oysters, uh, legumes and seeds and nuts and whole foods. They all have zinc, but smaller amounts. Another amino acid, NAC, which is cysteine, uh, it doesn't matter if it's cysteine or cysteine, basically it's the same. But what happens is that that's used to protect produce an antioxidant called glutathione. So foods that include cysteine include, again, the meat products, um, because it's an amino acid and we think about, uh, you know, the protein sources. So what are the protein sources? You can uh, low fat yogurt, sunflower seeds, some even cheeses, it's lentils, which is plant-based, a great source for uh, I'm sorry, the cysteine, which is an amino acid. Remember, I always talk about protein because I think it's important for weight management. If you have protein with each meal, it really helps curb that appetite so you're less likely to snack in between. We're able to, to store fat. We're able to store, store carbohydrate with blood sugar, you know, like in the form of glycogen and, and fat as well. But we're not really able to store protein. It's in our muscle, but without having to break down protein. So it's important to get protein every day. It's important to space it out throughout the day so that you're less likely to have, um, you know, those feelings of hunger throughout the day. So make sure that you're getting, I always push for those plant-based proteins. Uh, I think they're a healthier way to go. I worry about saturated fats. But again, it's important. Not all plant-based proteins have all those essential amino acids. One of the ones I know is quinoa. They're low in protein compared to some of the meats for sure, but it's considered a, you know, that they have all the essential amino acids. So it's a good source of plant-based proteins. And then on top of that, you can mix the different types of vegetables as well, the different types of beans, so that this way you're getting all those essential amino acids that you need. Essential amino acid is considered essential because your body does not produce them. That's why they're considered essential. So, as far as immune diseases, we know that there's a genetic component, but some of it can also be what we're exposed to. Uh, our, you know, like I mentioned, some of the foods that we're eating that's going internally, it really affects our gut bacteria. Uh, some of the, what we're putting on our skin, the pollution out in the air. So as far as immune autoimmune diseases, unfortunately what happens with the autoimmune diseases is that our body doesn't necessarily recognize an invader first our body. So it attacks our body and it damages the tissue. I know some of you here in the Facebook group, you've mentioned that you have autoimmune diseases. So some of my posts and my videos, I'll be concentrating on autoimmune diseases because again, it has to do with inflammation. And that's really an important topic for me. I too also have an autoimmune disease. I'm also a cancer survivor. So these topics are extremely important for me. If you're not in my Facebook group, Make sure you're in my Facebook group because I do a lot. I'm This is where I do most of my question and answers. I do have a Telegram group. I'm not as active there. I am on Instagram for posts every day and, you know, also some questions. But by and large, we're active in the Facebook group. I also have a YouTube channel. And check out my website. It's Sharon Mack Wellness.